Today on Fantasy War Room Live, which rookie wideouts will have a fantasy impact in 2014? Will year two under Chip Kelly produce more fantasy breakouts for the Eagles? How many games will Johnny Football start for the Browns? And does a return of Gronk mean a return to form for Tom Brady and the Patriots? All of these questions and more answered in the Fantasy War Room Live draft special. Starting now. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy War Room Live Draft Special. Once again, I am Matt Ufford and my co-host Nick Stevens joins us for year two of the War Room Live. Year two? Can you? It just seemed like seven months ago we were wrapping up a first season of the War Room, another successful fantasy football season that saw each of us walk away with some crowns and titles and now here we are it's almost football season it's draft time how yeah. exciting i should i should have amended that co-host slash fantasy champion nick stevens thank you and fantasy champion matt ufford um folks if you're just joining us for the first time welcome if you're if you're new or rather if you're just I'm, joining us for the first time yeah yeah and if you're an old if you're an old viewer which, or an old person yeah um then i should clarify something Wednesdays is our new day. Like, Wednesday right. is the new War Room day. Uh, we're starting at 5 o'clock Eastern tonight. In future weeks, Wednesdays at 4 p.m. is the time to watch us live on SBNation.com. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to live on in video form in SBNation.com and YouTube.com slash SBNation. And this is going to be a podcast, too. People will have all sorts of ways. And by the way, I'm told that a podcast is a uh, radio form uh, that people can listen to on pocket computers. It's it's a it's a pre-recorded radio show on a cassette that you can also make phone calls on. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. Uh, what you can expect tonight on the draft special or today, if you're listening further west. Where well, for our European friends, where it's already tonight, yes. or for our West Coast friends, where it's the afternoon. Yeah, in Australia, it's it's uh, morning. So that's Guten good. Tag, Australia. We have the entire world covered. Um, I should note that um, I just got so caught up with time zones. There was, was like, there was a lot oh. of there was a lot of excitement there. Look, basically, it's like this: Wednesday is the new Sunday, and now instead of just getting your last minute fantasy advice from us, and it was some sterling, fantastic top shelf fantasy advice. Mm -hmm. Now we'll give you fantasy advice on waiver wire Wednesday. Yep. So you're, you you you're you're fresh off of work. Perhaps you're still at work. You've made your waiver wire maneuvers. It's now time to turn the page from last week's win or defeat and get prepared for the new, the Fantasy Week resets on Wednesday. We're here to get you started on the right foot. Exactly, coming up on tonight's show, we're gonna run through positional rankings, and then towards the end of the show, we're gonna get to your questions, uh, answer them all correctly, as we are wont to do. Uh, first off though, I wanna talk a little bit about draft strategy. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets caught up uh, in the, there's always some hot new way to go. It used to be you draft RB, RB, every single draft, and then it was, I think this year the, the big talk is wait on a quarterback. If you can't get one of the big three, you gotta wait on a quarterback. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd like to push the notion that your draft strategy is fully contingent on where in a draft, a snake draft by the way, we're, talk, mm -hmm. we're talking snake draft, not auction draft, where in the draft you're located. If you're in one of the first three to four spots, five spots, yeah, of course you're gonna take a top running back, unless it's a PPR league and you wanna grab Calvin Johnson or what have you. Mm -hmm. If you're at the end of that first round, then yeah, a graft, uh, a grab, graft. We can graft wide receivers onto your person. <laughs> it's a grab draft. Yeah. It's a graft. Grab grab some of those excellent wide receivers that come after Calvin Johnson. Mm -hmm. Grab your Demarius Thomases. Grab a Julio Jones. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a firm believer of, I, I don't want people to suffer from, and, and I agree, that the first, the, pretty much the first five picks are, are set in stone. Somebody, an old man with white hair and a fan, fancy robe has come down a mountain and gone, these are your five picks. And that's who you go with. You go with Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles, uh, Shady McCoy, uh, Eddie Lacy, and Matt Forte. Those are your. Those are the five picks. Everyone goes with those five pretty much up top. Maybe Calvin Johnson sneaks into it. Sure. Uh, later on, though, things can get kind of freaky. But what I don't want people to suffer from is something I call ADPA, average draft position anxiety. Uh. If you have, if you know, there's a certain formula you can set up. If you've got something that works for you. If you like just getting flat out getting points, because at the end of the day, nobody cares how you got the points that you won by or that you've amassed. 
just get them. So if you're cool, if you like certain running backs later on and you know you're going to get 22 to 37 every week from Peyton Manning, those points count the same as running back and wide receiver points. Get them where you want them and don't have any fear about it. I like that. And again, the other thing that bothers me about getting locked into I have to get this position right now is that if you are set in a way uh, going into a draft, if something, if there's a run on tight ends in the fourth mm -hmm. round and suddenly you're like, I have to get this guy right now, right. Uh, where you're getting uh, an eighth round tight end in the fourth round, don't do that. Mm -mm. Just wait. There's going to be someone else. There's value to be grabbed there for, for someone else. Just because everyone else is barreling through the front doors of the Walmarts, pushing people over and firing shotguns into the air, doesn't mean you've got to turn into a fantasy looter too. Stick to your plan. Take your time. Just don't try it. Don't give in to the peer pressure that comes with everyone making their runs. Wise words from Mr. Nick G. Stevens. Thank you. Let's kick off our positional rankings by talking about the workhorses, the running backs. Mm -hmm. um, number one, we, by the way, as we talk about ADP tonight, mm -hmm. we're using a, a little site called fantasypros.com. They take a, uh, an average of uh, Yahoo rankings, ESPN rankings, CBS Sports. Uh, a lot of these ADP positions are um, suspect. A few of them are kind of suspect. Uh, I do like the fact, and I think this is very helpful because we're all in a couple of different leagues, uh, and you do a little CBS, you do some Yahoo. Of course, my favorite site for fantasy news and information is SBNation.com. Of course, of course. But nice um, thank you. Uh, but Fantasy Pros, I appreciate the fact that they sort of aggregate for you, which is very helpful. Um, I the, the, some of these rankings are a little bit suspect, but again, uh, we kind of know where everyone should go in the we're, first we're place. We're using it as a jumping off point. That's so, all it is. So our top three, I think that no one's going to argue with you if you took LaShawn McCoy, Adrian Peterson, or Jamal Charles first. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't. It just. I personally like McCoy the best of the bunch. I, um, I do. I've got I've got 100% faith in uh, in in LaShawn McCoy and Chip Kelly's offense. Year two, I'm in love with that offense. I want Eagles on my fantasy team. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of faith in Jamal Charles. I love the man. He won me a championship last year, but I don't have that same kind of faith in Alex Smith uh, and the Chiefs offense. And same thing with Adrian Peterson. Uh, a little bit of a suspect Vikings offense. We've seen that Adrian Peterson is so good that he can single-handedly take that Vikings team to the playoffs. But still, age 29, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about mm -hmm. Peterson, the, the, the usage. So for me, it's McCoy. Yeah, uh, when it comes to Adrian Peterson, uh, I'm, I was initially surprised when I saw that LaShawn McCoy was going number one pretty much overall. Like, oh, he's 1.6. All right, let's just cut the crap. He's, the, he's, he's pretty much number one overall this year. He is a beefier, more useful, uh, sh should we say he's a slightly beefier and a little bit more explosive and dangerous Marshall Falk for the year 2014. Okay, okay. And he's in an offensive genius's sort of, you know, offense. He's in, he's in a guru's offense in Chip Kelly. Uh, he seems also a little more likable and approachable than Mike Martz as well. Uh, Mike Martz seemed like a, wow, what a, what a hump. Um, <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing about Adrian Peterson. Like, like, okay, Jamal Charles, yeah, he's pretty much the standard number two here. Why I could see Adrian Peterson either being number one and pushing McCoy down to two, or I could, he could be three or later, is that, like you said, it's 29. Now, there are a lot of miles on those tires because he has been run into the ground every year for like six straight years in the NFL. Uh, didn't take any time off from the ACL surgery. It's Everyone is waiting for him, productivity, speed, and fantasy-wise, to finally hit the wall. It's, it's sort of like everyone's finally waiting for the sex in that marriage to get boring. I don't think it's going to this year. I think he's got one or two killer years left in him. Yeah, we, we've also witnessed that he is a complete physical uh, mon monstrosity uh, right. uh, of, of, uh, of beyond human. If he could swing a bat, he would be Bo Jackson. Yes, he, he might well be. We mm -hmm. just don't have that same sort of two-sport athlete he's anymore. Truly, he's, he's truly a specimen. And Actually, that might get me to watch baseball. If Adrian Peterson played, I would, <laughs> I would completely watch again. And he'd make the Twins I don't want to. I don't want to get caught up too much in this top three, top five discussion. It's because throwaway it's throwaway time. If you're, if you're drafting these guys, you're going to be fine. Like, like You're in a good shape. It just depends on, is it a PPR league? Yes, then bump up Jamal Charles and Matt Forte. Is it not? Then just take who you like and who you've got faith in. Uh, my first question mark on the rankings comes mm -hmm. at Marshawn Lynch, uh, nine ADP, uh, and I just, I as a Seahawks fan, I, mm -hmm. I love Marshawn Lynch. He's been the identity for that team. Mm -hmm. He got more, broke more tackles, and got uh, a, and got more yardage from a garbage offensive line last year. Just an amazing running back. 
but. But. And this is a team that's planning on, you know, 18, 19 game season. They are going to want him around for the playoffs. I think he's had over 900 carries the last three years, more mm -hmm. than anyone else in the NFL, which if we look in a wider view, you know, that's not so much historically. However, uh, in today's NFL, where people are getting beat up more and more, uh, you have to be concerned that are the Seahawks going to take him down from the 300 carries to like more like 250. This is a team that's going to be running the ball 450 times a season. Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't know what his usage rate is going to be. I think he's still going to be good as long as he's had back some, some back spasms in the past. Like I'm a little bit concerned at age 28, which is still young enough to have a great season. I just don't have a huge confidence of using my number nine overall pick on Marshawn Lynch. I wouldn't. I would absolutely not. I, to me, he's to me he's uh, a second round. To me, he's got first round talent, but he's a second round value, and because he comes with dual prong concerns, one being that he did that he has carried the ball the most the past three years. One a that he played the deepest of all the running backs that carried the ball that much because he didn't finish playing football well into February, and then there was the whole celebration campaign. So he took the most lumber and the most hits last year. And number two, I just, I get these hunches sometimes about the play, and I think a lot of other people too, that, you know, he held out, he wanted some more money. That starts telling me that he might know something about his body, like I might have to cash in before my body cashes in. Well, he knows he knows that uh, he's going to be cut after this season to make room for Russell Wilson's gigantic contract. And that's, it's going to be a giant, the, the, the Joe Flacco team killing, but it's necessary contract. Side note, looking good on that SI cover, Russell. Mm. Hello. Did he just get the SI cover? Uh, and then some. It's uh, if you haven't seen it, it's um, shall I say revealing? revealing? Yes. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. No wonder why homeboy got divorced in the offseason. Oh. Uh, anywho, has nothing to do with his ADP. <laughs> we we are offering no fantasy value at all whatsoever. I want to move on. I want to say uh, uh, a couple more folks in the top ten uh, of running back rankings. I like Demarco Murray a lot. That's a fantastic offensive mm -hmm. line in Dallas. Uh, it's a great offense in Dallas and a historically terrible defense. Go with DeMarco Murray in that bottom half mm -hmm. of the top ten for running backs. If he can stay healthy. One quick knock on him has been, a knock on him has been that he hasn't played a full season. Okay, a lot of running backs have a hard time staying healthy for 16 games. He played 14 games last year, and he was really good. And over the last, I believe, five weeks of the season, he was, if not the highest, maybe the second highest scoring running back in all of fantasy. What, but the problem was that the Dallas... Cowboys had turned into a tire fire that was dropped into a dumpster fire, and then Kyle Orton did his best Tony Romo impersonation, and that's all everyone talked about. What everyone didn't talk about was the fact that DeMarco Murray was the right kind of fire at the end of the season. And if he stays healthy, if I get 14 games out of him at that rate this year, mm -hmm. I love it. I like DeMarco Murray a lot. Uh, Monte Ball, Arian Foster, uh, round out that kind of top nine where you're getting that starting, starting uh, uh, running back workhorse character. Monte Ball, I've got some, some concerns about, is C.J. Anderson. He has not solidified that job to the point that I don't know if this, you know, 15th overall pick I'm using on him is going to end up, like, he's, the carries are going to go to C.J. Anderson. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that, like, I don't know what's going on in Denver enough to, to really, I like Monte Ball a lot as a player, mm -hmm. um, but... I'm just, I'm just, yeah, there's some hesitation there. I also don't know if we really saw enough of Monty Ball last year to really get a feel for how his running style in the pros and how effective he's going to be. Last year, Noshan Moreno had a phenomenal season, mostly running draws off Omaha and catching passes out of the backfield. There wasn't a really good, there's never a power eye formation in Denver with Peyton Manning. That's not going to be what the running game is, but... Can he be Edron James 2.0 for Peyton Manning's 39-year-old led Denver Broncos? Perhaps. He very well might be. I just don't think we've seen enough on him as well. I, I, Monty Ball could burst through the ceiling and be the guy that we all should have said, oh, why didn't I take him at six? But he also might be like a late second round value. I will note that Peyton Manning is a very young 38, sir. He, he is a very young 38. I also do appreciate the fact that all the backups this year in fantasy that people need to know about or that we should handcuff to all have names that uh, sound like they either work in HR or accounting. Well, let's talk about them because... C.J. Anderson, Lance Dunbar. Oh, Dunbar. Man, he's the worst. <laughs> um, I want to talk about those, uh, those backups, okay. those sleepers. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. The top 20, after basically after we get outside of that 10, we get Le'Veon Bell, I think is great value. Mm -hmm. um, Reggie Bush, we just saw, had a very explosive run. I think in a PPR league, he's still worth investing in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not touching Frank Gore. You can pay me to draft Frank Gore this year. Um, no. and, that, and that is my way of sliding into, as we talk about sleepers and backups that I like, Carlos Hyde is, is someone that I'm very, very high on. 
uh, and I think that he's got great great potential for the season. I just I just want to buy him ice cream and sit in a parked car and tell him he's pretty. <laughs> I, Carlos Hyde, a big I'm a big college football fan as well. I don't just do my football watching on Sundays yeah. and some given Mondays and Thursdays. Carlos Hyde was the running back who just jumped off the Saturday afternoon screen last year. That game against Michigan late in the season, the great Ohio State-Michigan rivalry as it is, high scoring game. Michigan didn't have much of a defense to begin with last year. They could not stop, nobody could really stop him. The yeah. only team I saw put a hurt on him last year was Michigan State. And that was probably, that was, that was a historically good Michigan State defense. He looked so pro ready. And that he went to San Francisco, the perfect place for when 93-year-old Frank Gore finally decides to retire and then just do like most cats do and wander off into the forest and die. Carlos Hyde is the perfect guy to take over. <laughs> uh, I want to make my love known, uh, not my love, but my preference known. Uh, as we wrap up running backs, uh, give, me, uh, give me one more, one more uh, late, late round guy that you like at running back. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not as excited as everyone else is uh, about grabbing Bishop Sankey, the, the the rookie that a lot of people are getting excited about because, oh, well, Sean Green's terrible, and, and that may very well be true. But Bishop Sankey's done nothing to light it up during the preseason. Uh, I think it's going to take a little time for him to get it. He does have true talent. I'm not jumping all over. I'm not jumping all over the Bishop Sankey wagon. I'm kind of loving, uh, I'm really excited about, and I know I'm a Patriots fan, so this should come as no surprise to anyone. Oh, Shane Vereen may touch the ball. Uh, 120 times that counts. If you can get, if you, uh, excuse me, 220 times. He may get close to 200 carries. He might get 75 to 80 catches out of the backfield. Yeah. I think he's going to be the most valuable backfield, the most valuable backfield member in New England and could find his way into being like a number 11, number 12 fantasy value back this season. Uh, my final note on running backs mm -hmm. is uh, as a Seahawks fan, I've of course paid very close attention to them. The big buzz is for Christian Michael because mm -hmm. he's an electric, powerful, physical <clears throat> runner, uh, great burst. But the reality is that Robert Turbin is the number two there, mm -hmm. and the Seahawks coaches trust him. He doesn't fumble. He pass blocks well. If something happens to Marshawn Lynch, and even even if he doesn't, there's there's going to be an extra 150, 200 uh, uh, carries to go in that Seahawks to be spread out to be spread out against those three. Grab Robert Turbin. He's going undrafted, and Christian Michael is is a waste of a draft pick at this point. Oh, and it also should be noted, last year the muscle hamster killed a lot of people that drafted him in the first round after he emerged following a phenomenal 2012 rookie campaign. Now people are down on Doug Martin again because, oh, what are they going to do in Tampa? Lovey Smith's very conservative. They just, now speaking of Patriots knowledge, they just traded for Logan Mankins. He's on the offensive line now in Tampa. His pass blocking is not what it was before. He's a great run blocker. I would bump Doug Martin back up a little bit because their offensive line just got solidified. Good note. All right, now it is time for us to discuss quarterbacks. Yes. Uh, and again, this is all about the big three, and then a lot of depth at the position. Once you get, once you bridge that divide between mm -hmm. Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, then there's that huge divide until you get to the Staffords and Lux. But then there's just mm -hmm. a lot of depth. There's a lot of quarterbacks that are late. That are, that are going late in drafts mm -hmm. that I really like and I think present better value if you can't snag Breeze, Rodgers, Manning. And by the way, I don't want to draft a 38-year-old quarterback. I no. know as amazing as Peyton Manning is, and he is the best ever, mm -hmm. I don't want to draft a 38-year-old quarterback. But if he's going to get you... With right, a reconstructed look, neck. He's got, all right, fine. I, I, I full well understand that most butcher shops don't have as much pig DNA in them as Peyton Manning's neck does. Sure. That said... Uh, Look, he, historic year last year, let's all just sort of wipe away the fact that your Seahawks used Peyton and the rest of his team as human mops to clean the floor of mm. MetLife Stadium. That was I know, delightful. I, know. I mean, talk about a game that was over before it began. Continue your point, please. Of course. Um, let's say Peyton puts up at 80% of what he did last year. That would still be 44 touchdowns, which would put him on, which is a top 10 all-time quarterback season. That's why I like to, again, that's why I stick with the idea that if you can get the points where you can get them, I don't really care where you get them as long as you've got your plan. I will say that even if you make the case that Monte Ball is equivalent to Sean Moreno, which is, you know, probably being conservative, but starting running back, gone. Wes Welker, 33 years old and on his 50th concussion. Uh, Eric Decker, the red zone target, gone and mm -hmm. replaced with Emmanuel Sanders, who's more of a burner outside, uh, outside type. I don't really know what's, what I'm getting out of that Denver Broncos office. Yes, Peyton, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. But yeah. 
I would rather have Drew Brees or Aaron Rodgers who uh, are more reliable year in and year out. But few people can make a four-star meal out of deli meat and cheese product than Peyton Manning can. I, I mean, look at who has made household names. Made household names. Austin Colley, Anthony Gonzalez, Pierre Garçon made $45 million in Washington because he caught passes from Peyton Manning in Indianapolis. I, I, Peyton Manning still should be the first quarterback that goes off the board because you can count on 40-plus touchdowns and even though there's going to be a drop-off with no Welka and Eric Decker being gone and replaced by Sanders, and yes, defenses are now aware of Julius Thomas, Demarius Thomas, we'll get to him later in wide receivers, in a contract year and in full ascension and bloom, makes me think that Peyton Manning, just by this much over Brees, should be the number one quarterback. Drew Brees has been the first or second rated fantasy quarterback uh, every year for the last six years. You cannot say the same thing for Peyton Manning. Well, excuse me yes, for sir. living. There you go. Fine. Anyway, l let's get things more interesting. Okay. I don't want to talk about Matt Stafford or Andrew Luck. But I think. once again, it's the top three again. It's like like you said earlier, like just like with the running backs. You know who the top three to five are. Here, Manning, Breeze, Rogers. Got it. Okay. Quarterback gets interesting. I'll tell you what, you're a Patriots fan. I'm going to let I'm gonna give you 20 seconds to talk about Tom Brady. Tom Brady last who, year. Who, by the way, totally sank, submarined, shamelessly destroyed one of my fantasy teams last year. So make a case for Tom Brady, Okay. Please. Tom Brady, 2013. A bunch of rookie wide receivers, only half a season at Gronk. Uh, Aaron Hernandez murdered several people. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. Aaron, yeah, okay, sure. I'm making giant air quotes podcast people. No, I'm not TV people. Um, so who's he got, has no one to throw to? Next to no one to throw to. The top guy, his top receiver was a guy named Ken Brell. That's a made-up name. Mm -hmm, now is. this year, all of his made-up name wide receivers, they're, they're healthy. They understand the offense. Danny Amendola and Julian Edelman, who easily and very adeptly replaced Wes Welker. Another year in the system. Well-paid, compensated, healthy together. Uh, and you might get more Gronk. Plus, they just traded for Tim Wright, who might give you only 70% of what Aaron Hernandez gave you, but 100% of none of the murders. So again, there's every reason to think that Tom Brady's not gonna throw for just 4,300 yards and 25 touchdowns. That is a very 2006 Tom Brady season. You can probably expect something more like a 2011 Tom Brady season, low 30s on touchdowns, 5,000 yards, seven picks, and a much happier fantasy owner. Hmm. Interesting. As bounce back seasons go, I might actually prefer Matt Ryan. Um, I'm kind of bullish on Matt Ryan now. He was hard knocks effect. I uh, I know because he has the worst joke delivery of anybody I've ever seen. And a longer um, neck than I anticipated. I do. He really does. Uh, I do anticipate the uh, return of a fully healthy Julio Jones, a fully healthy Roddy White. Um, uh, the loss of Sam Baker on the offensive line is a Bad, bad break, but Jake Matthews is a monster. Great uh, band. Uh, yes. Also looks like a giant overgrown Hawaiian child, doesn't he? Does, it? He does, he yeah. does. Um, and so I like I like Matt Ryan. Um, moving down the list, uh, Robert Griffin III, no thanks. No. Uh, play play a 16-game season and, mm -hmm. and let me know uh, if, if it doesn't end in an ACL tear or getting benched, then I might be interested in drafting you. Does he, why does it look like Robert Griffin now is moving around the pocket like drunk Pinocchio? I he don't know. Like, do you know what I'm like? He just doesn't look like first his rookie season. He had poise and composure, and he was very fluid back there. Made plays up on his own. Now, you know, last year, obviously playing off the injury, a lot of skepticism and doubt in a folding offensive line. There was chaos and turmoil in DC. Now this year, he just doesn't look like he knows where he wants to go, or is very non-committal in the pocket. And that's the worst thing you can do when the offense runs entirely through you. I love the Redskins' offense ceiling. I love the addition of Deshaun Jackson. Jordan Reed is an excellent uh, weapon if he mm -hmm. manages to keep the brain right. Correct. Um, and Pierre, uh, Pierre Garçon is still there, of course. Mm -hmm. That had a the, surprisingly good year last year. I uh, got lots of targets. A lot of, in a PPR that's, league, that's Kirk, in a PPR league, Pierre Garçon was excellent. So I like the Redskins' offensive ceiling, but not enough to the point where I'm going to draft RG3. And as nope. we talk about those young guns, the RG3s, Colin Kaepernick, who has looked terrible in the preseason. That contract hasn't gone to his head. We, I don't want to speculate, but I will say That's that of those young guns, Russell Wilson, and again, you know, uh, biases aside, has looked, besides, you know, leading coolly a Super Bowl team to victory, uh, has also looked phenomenal in the preseason. I think the Seahawks, uh, of his the nine drives that he's led, uh, as we, we talk about the show, uh, on offense, eight of them have been, for, they've only punted once, and seven of them have been touchdowns. All right, we get it. You've swiped on Russell Wilson's picture on Tinder. We understand. Yes. I, I'm just, I'm actually just as bullish as you are on Russell Wilson. 
because of the fact that he's been running the ball in. He's got three running touchdowns in the preseason, a couple passing touchdowns, all those touchdown drives. And I think you were telling me earlier this week when we were talking about me drafting a proxy for you for another fantasy league that you, you were like, I really hope you can get Russell Wilson for me because I think this is the year the restrictor plates come off. And I think this is a, that you nailed it. If you just give him, if, if the running game's not quite as good, if you don't have quite the weaponry that you do with the wide receiver, but you've got a kid that knows the offense in and out, is great in the clutch, and is as awesome in minute one as he is at 59-40 on the, 59-40 in the game, let him go. Let, let him do it. I think, I'm not sure the Seahawks will be as dominant this year. They may have one or two extra losses on the, uh, on the record. I think Russell Wilson is going to be a boss this season. I believe it was uh, ESPN Fantasy Stats that noted uh, he had one rushing touchdown last year. If he'd had four, which is how many I think he had in his rookie season, he would have been the fourth-rated fourth uh, quarterback Overall in fantasy quarterback. football. Isn't that amazing? So, so, yeah, this is – if you assume that he has more than one rushing touchdown this year, which he already has three in three games in the mm -hmm. preseason, I think that he's a, an excellent investment. Speaking of excellent investments, 15th quarterback, Phillip Rivers, ADP of 104. He was the fifth-ranked fantasy quarterback last year, completed almost 70% of his passes. Right. I don't know why he's down at 15 this year. Do you know that's, that's interesting? That's, that's disrespect, Nick. He actually, uh, he, was, uh, he was almost ranked as high as number of kids he has. Oh, wow. Nice. Six kids. <laughs> what is wrong with He's had a kid for every year he's been in the NFL. All right, yeah, you saw that coming a mile away. An incredibly resurgent year because, of course, uh, someone who I think was actually very instrumental in helping rebuild Peyton Manning, Mike McCoy, the QB whisperer, taking over as the head coach in San Diego, did a wonderful job. Danny Woodhead coming over, his little outlet pass out of the backfield, the ascension of Keenan Allen, not having to worry about if Malcolm Floyd was going to throw up or die on the field in front of them. They had a, a terrific season. If he takes a slight step back this year, he's still going to be a top 10 quarterback. Correct. I, uh, for your Philip Rivers, I'm all about Jay, Jay Cutler. Cutler. Listen. We don't, you know what are not stats in fantasy football? Funny pictures of you smoking on the internet and sideline pouting shots. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. What does matter is the fact that last year between Cutler and McCown, they had 32 touchdown passes in Mark Tressman's offense. And he is a Canadian offensive super genius. He's got a funny accent, but a great team. Yeah. And that offense is loaded from Martellus Bennett, not Martellus Bryant, no Pulp Fiction members on gotcha. that offense. Gotcha. Matt Forte. Obviously, the, the, the big guys on the outside, Alshon Jeffrey, three first names are not, I love them. Brandon Marshall, absolutely 100%. If you can get Cutler in like six or seven, yeah. and you can stock up on all your running backs and wide receivers early, you are sitting pretty. Yeah, he, he's definitely in the uh, Tony Romo joke in the NFL, but kind of amazing in fantasy football quarterback school. Yeah. It's an, so. interesting, it's an interesting neighborhood to live in, but the view's nice. We need to wrap up our discussion on quarterbacks. Give me uh, some thoughts on someone for, that we haven't talked about yet later in the draft, probably. Um, maybe, a, maybe a Jonathan Football Manzo. Jo no, zero. Zero interest whatsoever. Do you want to know why I would take Johnny Manzo? Either, my t either I'm already 5-0, and, oh, and I can actually afford to just goof around on the waiver wire, or I'm 0-5. Oh the season's lost, and I've turned into the troll on the message board, and I've got nothing better to do. I just want everyone to talk about the fact that I took Johnny Manziel. Yeah. Otherwise, he has no value. Johnny Clipboard, at this point, has no service or value on your fantasy team whatsoever. Oh, that's a, just a real talk right there. That was some straight, up, that was some straight up real talk. He was awesome in college. It's going to take some time in the pros. All right. I think um, I definitely like uh, his the prospects for his pro career. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in him as a fantasy player at this moment. Eventually, I yeah. may ha I will have. Here's the right. weird thing. I will actually have more use using Matt Schaub as a bye week fill in than I would hoping that Johnny Menzel finally starts that week. Ooh, that gave I, that, that, that was an icy chill that just went down my spine. There is no Pepto Bismol for what I just said. All right. Good talk. <laughs> okay. That was the original name of the show. <laughs> Let's talk now about wide receivers. Uh, oh, my a favorite. Fantastic, fantastic deep position. There is so much value uh, from the top to the bottom of this draft at wide receiver mm -hmm. because it's a passing league, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, listen. Oh, uh, and all the d damn defensive holding and the, everything else that's going to go on. As if it wasn't already easy enough to catch a four to nine yard pass in the NFL and not worry, unless of course you're Wes Walker and you went over the middle. No. Oh. It's so, it's what, too soon? Come yeah. on. I no, want to retire. It's perfectly I do. fine. Um, it's so easy to catch a four to nine yard pass in the NFL and in a PPR league. It's just so great to pick up all these hundred plus 
reception guys. Um, but now that you can't touch them after five at all, you can't think about it, can't whisper, all these things. If you whisper towards them, it's a penalty. Um, that's just making me think that now this could be a year as everyone continues to go on these ridiculous runs in PPR leagues, still grabbing the running backs. Some of these wide receivers are going to be running back stud, if not running back stud plus scorers this season. Yeah. Um, so, of course, I'm not even going to waste extra words on Calvin Johnson. He's an amazing uh, pick that, that you're going to get. He's my Adrian P. He's my Adrian Peterson. Oh, you're worried though. about the health? Um, now, see, he's had to go up and get one too many long passes that Stafford's overthrown, and he's landed hard on that Here's turf. the thing. Where he is at ADP, it's usually, uh, you'll see him, at, he's at five at our ADP right now, mm -hmm. but in most leagues I've seen, he's at six with Jimmy Graham at seven. Mm -hmm. If I have the opportunity to draft Calvin Johnson or Jimmy Graham, I take Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Let somebody else get Calvin Johnson. If I get stuck with Calvin Johnson, I'm not really too worried about that. But let's talk about the next tier of guys, and mm -hmm. I think this is defined by uh, Demarius, Des Bryant, A.J. Green, Brandon Marshall, and Julio Jones are kind of like the next big five. I'm right. going be happy with any of those guys. Any, any of those guys. Brandon Marshall, every year continues to, like every year that he's in a Jay Cutler-led offense, I don't think he has less than, I think it, it's, it's somewhere in the 90s. I probably, those numbers are helpful. Look, just trust me, audience. Every year that he's in a Jay Cutler-led offense, he has close to 100 catches, well over 1,200 yards, and seven, eight, if not 10 touchdowns. Yep. He's absolute, he carries you as a wide receiver one. Even with Alshon Jeffrey being on the other side and having as many receiving yards, maybe more and more touchdowns. He's awesome. Uh, we've also got Des Bryant, who is mm -hmm. in a contract year. AJ Green, who I think of as like elite Vincent Jackson. He's like, he goes out there, he, uh, he gets tons of targets, he mm -hmm. gets you tons of yards, but because it's the Bengals and they're not that sexy, like you don't think of him quite the same way that you do as as, as Dez mm -hmm. or, or Demarius playing in flashier offenses. Right. But A.J. Green gets it done. Julio Jones, I have a slight concern about the foot. It's the same same bone as foot, been broken twice now. I, I have a slight injury concern, but I, he, he looks great. He looks he great looks, for the time. He looks fast. Looks and though I don't want, again, I don't want the hard knocks effect to make me fall in love with somebody who's only going to damn my fantasy team to Hades, but Julio Jones looks like the guy that they traded several first round draft picks for who lit it up in 2012. As we get to about the 20th to 24th pick in a draft uh, and, and slide down to the next tier of receivers, Antonio Brown is the guy that has generated tons of buzz. Anyone who's looking at your advanced stats. Last year he was fourth in targets, second in catches, fourth in yards after catch. If you're leading the, the, if you're at the top of the NFL at, at targets and catches and also yards after catch, yeah. like that is, and he has no competition for targets in, in no. Pittsburgh anymore. No, he just lost his number one target yeah. now that the number one the Emmanuel competition. Sanders. It's going to be Heath Miller. Uh, no, Jericho Cotri has gone nope. there too. Yeah, uh, it's just Anto it's going to be a Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown offense. And while there are some concerns, is he just going to have like, is he going to be double teamed constantly? Mm -hmm. It's not a problem with Antonio Brown. No, he's, he's going to get his. The, the NFL got pretty wise to him last year, and yet even though he became the priority of the defense, he still would pull off nine for one seventeen in two touchdowns. Yeah. He would have had another touchdown and thirty plus more receiving yards had he not stepped out of bounds in that snow game against Miami and Pittsburgh would have That's even right. gone to the playoffs. That's right. He was I I'm drafted. So him glad last that year. didn't happen. I know. <laughs> I, I, I just because when Pittsburgh cries, I smile. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get that on a t shirt. Um, He's tremendous, and I t I'll tell you what, like you just said, like as we get down to 20 to 24 in the second round, you're in the snake, okay? You're drafting fourth. Uh, you thought about Lacey, and you took Forte, and now it's coming to you at 20, 21. And you're thinking like, oh, I got Lacey, I got Forte. Like, I wonder if I should just try to get another running back now and then get some wide receivers later. If you can grab Antonio Brown and you're in a half-point PPR, above some of the other guys that are around him, mm -hmm. get it. You will not. He's, he scores like a stud running back. Fills in the wide receiver I'll position. take I'll take Antonio Brown over Jordy Nelson. I'll mm -hmm. take him over Alshon Jeffrey. I so like I. Antonio Brown that much. Let's move into that uh, the 11 through 20 picks. Um, I, I see this list of receivers, and I have a, a red flashing siren of stay away with Larry Fitzgerald. I you know, I and I, I'm not I'm not breaking it. I'm not breaking any uh, uh, big boundaries here by by, no. by speaking this. But You're it's not just, breaking hearts or just, just all right. He still scored still scored touchdowns well last year, but mm -hmm. didn't even get a thousand yards receiving. Uh, Michael Floyd did. He is going to take. He is. Everyone has been talking about the fact that this is the time when he ascends to the number one wide receiver spot, mm -hmm. and Larry Fitzgerald becomes more of the number two complementary receiver. And that actually could be to not only Larry Fitzgerald, that could actually prolong his career. It may benefit 
everyone who drafts Larry Fitzgerald because now if Mal if Michael Floyd starts dragging some number one coverage like the number one cornerback and a safety his way, now we're talking about two and three cornerbacks covering Larry Fitzgerald. He's going to eat them alive. Watch him have the best season in the past three, four years because of Michael Floyd. I'm not drafting him 34th. <laughs> oh, hell no. Absolutely not. What? No, 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 no. I would be, I would be, I would want to draft Michael Floyd later, or I'd be more keen on drafting Keenan Allen. Absolutely, uh, Keenan well, Allen's salvaged, tremendous second salvaged half. a couple seasons for me, Ooh. and uh, has been a great keeper for me in a couple of leagues. Uh, I'm still high on him, even with the return of Malcolm Floyd. Keenan Allen is uh, with the continued deterioration of Antonio Gates. Keenan Allen is Phil Rivers' number one red zone target right. right now. The first time a breeze blows in San Diego this fall, Malcolm Floyd will pull a hamstring. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That's <laughs> just I'm, what he does. I'm laughing because it's true. Yeah, I know. Uh, let's talk about bounce back seasons as we round out the top 20. Okay. I love Victor Cruz. I absolutely love Victor Cruz at 40th overall. Mm. This is a guy, look at, he's, okay. he's the, your the Giants are guy. not going to be that bad again. Look, it's imp I don't know if you know this, but uh, scientifically speaking, it's impossible for the Giants to be that bad two years in a row. <laughs> I've done my research and my math. And, and while we talk about bounce backs, I like Roddy White, too. He had the high... That's even my, though, he's my guy. Even though he played every week, I think, uh, last year, the first half of his season, the high ankle sprain completely destroyed his mobility, his mm -hmm. speed, everything. And, you put, and a high ankle sprain is one of those things... You can't, you can, but you shouldn't play through. I wish we would just establish like high ankle sprain. Hey, you know what? You're just not playing for six weeks. Yeah. I just wish that would happen because otherwise you're like, well, maybe he'll do something. No, they never do. Not with a high ankle sprain. Um, no. it, you got to Like Roddy White, um, very high on uh, as they're ranked here. They're going 43rd and 45th overall, 17th and 18th wide receivers, Roddy White and Michael Crabtree. Look, the Niners may shock a lot of people and go like 7-9 and nine this year, let's say. Let's say they only have an 8-8 eight eight season. I know, you're just like, oh, could I feast on that schadenfreude? Delicious. I um, would. I of would. course, Crabtree didn't play a full year last year, had the ruptured Achilles, came back late in the year, and was excellent all the way up until the ball got tipped and don't you ever talk about me. Well, now he's going to play a full season. He is by far the number one target, has the biggest, strongest hands in the NFL. And I think he's going to have a tremendous year as the Vernon Davis is a year older, a year slower. And Kaepernick, Bolden is a Kaepernick year slower. Kaepernick loves throwing to Crabtree. As yeah. you can tell, because on the left side of the field in the NFC Championship game, there was a wide receiver wide open at the first down marker, but mm -hmm. he decided to go for the win with Michael Crabtree. And said. the double covered guy in the corner with mm -hmm. Richard Sherman on. Great. Didn't this has nothing to do with his decision making? The, the just we're we're just talking targets. Yep, just talking targets. Uh, <laughs> I love that you have. I will. I will let's take talk about uh, Cordero Patterson because okay. I think he's routinely going about ten spots too early. Um, he's looked good in the preseason, and he does have that. He's small. He's slight. Yeah, but he does have game changing speed. Does and, uh, and is he still going to return the ball too? He and Percy Harvin are very similar players in that uh, uh, they're game changing guys. With with Harvin, there are the questions like how long until he gets injured. Mm -hmm. With Patterson, I'm more concerned of like we're basing this draft uh, uh, this draft position of him at 49 uh, on a four game sample. Mm -hmm. Like he was amazing at the end of last season, so let's do this. I will say what I do like about this is that uh, the theme for wide receivers is this. They have limited impact in their rookie season. Go after those sophomore wide receivers in the NFL. Sophomore standouts. Your Alshon Jeffries. Uh, and I think of, Co of Cordell Patterson. This is his Patterson. third year actually now. But last year. Was oh, blew last, it up last year. Last year. Like, he didn't do much of his, his rookie season. You want to see some flashes of talent uh, their rookie season, and then they take that big step their second year. That's the Alshon Jeffrey model. We've seen it before. I think Cordell Pat Patterson definitely has that opportunity to do that. And there's the same reason why I like DeAndre Hopkins a lot this year, too, as a sleeper. Right. A lot of pressure put on him last year when Andre, when Andre Johnson wasn't around. Yeah. Uh, now this year, the only thing that actually would probably take away from DeAndre Hopkins not having a phenomenal second, sophomore year is the fact that he's got Ryan Fitzpatrick throwing him the ball. But he can get him. You know, look, he might go for 75, 800, and 7. Okay, I'll take that. And I'll, that's a mid-round flyer on a wide receiver. I think he could do, I think he's going to do even better than that. Think so? I think he could be uh, an 80 catch thousand yard guy. Um, let's, I want to, we got to wrap up wide receivers. Let's, uh, but I do want to talk about, we got a great rookie class of wide receivers. Phenomenal rookie, much better Sammy than Sammy Watkins, yep. Brandon Cooks, Mike Evans, Kelvin Benjamin, Jordan Matthews, even on the Broncos with uh, Wes Welker on the down, maybe Cody Latimer. Mm -hmm. Who do you like of that group? Uh, my two guys that I've been targeting and easily grabbing in the ninth and 10th round, um, sometimes even in the 11th round, have been 
Mike Evans and Kelvin Benjamin. And I think they're starting to creep up and become eighth and ninth round guys, not nine, 10, or even 11th round guys, because both of them have had great preseasons. And I know, a preseason, not even the third game, a dress rehearsal does an actual regular season make. I got it. That said, the proof is in the preseason here because we've seen Mike Evans go up well over many other tall, average, if not very well-sized cornerbacks and get touchdowns from McCown. And Kelvin Benjamin, easily has caught the eye of Cam Newton and become his number one guy. They lost all of their wide receivers, all of them. Yeah. And Kelvin Benjamin is six foot five as well. Big target, big season. Even if he's not fully developed, he's going to get a fair number of targets. He'll, you know, he'll drink his milk, he'll be fine. So, uh, let's wrap things up with some of my favorite sleepers as we go later through the draft. I love Jeremy Macklin at 73. Mm -hmm. You've got an Eagles offense, Deshaun Jackson, the big producer from that offense last year in the and the passing game mm -hmm. is gone. Someone has to step in to fill it fill in. I know ACL tear, but he's he's looked solid in the preseason. I can't worry about them tearing again and pulling pulling the Sam Bradford. I think, you know, I'm gonna have that faith that Jeremy Macklin is gonna get it done. I think for 73 overall, fantastic value. Mm -hmm. Terrence Williams of the Cowboys, we talk about sophomore wide receivers stepping up. He's gonna be a great pick at uh, 89-90. Um, and uh, at the end of the draft. I love Brian Hartline. He just gets it done. If you have a PPR league and you get Brian Hartline in the 15th round, Ugh. it's not sexy. It's not People sexy. People that draft Brian Hartline still rent DVDs and pay for groceries with checks. You get 75 catches and 1,000 yards. Oh, God. Go to the library to get a book. Jeez. How about how about this? How about this, then? I'll, I'll do something a little bit sexy for okay. you. End of the draft, Justin Hunter. Yes. 134 overall. There we, that's what I'm talking As about. As we talk about those sophomore wide receivers, go with the Justin Hunter. The speed. And you want to know why we like the Justin Hunter? Because we know what Kendall Wright is going to do. Kendall Wright, we have, seen, we have seen the book. We have read it. I have eaten at Kendall Wright's. It is dependable. The ribs are fine. The burger's usually good. The beer is cold. That's good. Sure. But Justin Hunter's, you could go there and the meal might suck or it may be the meal of your life because he's got the speed. Kendall Wright is the possession receiver. Justin Hunter is the game changer. He, Kendall Wright may have eight catches. Justin Hunter may only have four. Justin Hunter's going to be the one with the two, two touchdowns. touchdowns. Yep. I could not agree more. All right. Let's close out discussion on wide receivers. Let us now move to tight ends, sir. Uh, all day. Also known as uh, girls, Jimmy Graham and the uh, also Rans. Yes. Um, Jimmy Graham. I have to say, Jimmy Graham. For somebody who truly, for someone who truly doesn't seem like they fit into the the size or shape of any one position on the NFL football field, and who, when his helmet is removed, looks like a supervillain from a bad sci-fi movie. Truly is an amazing football player. Fantastic athlete. I cannot uh, believe I cannot believe he's somehow only getting better. I don't know if you can cover he him. He didn't now. he didn't just lead tight ends in touchdown receptions last year. He led the entire NFL. Everyone. He scored a touchdown a week. That's that's better than everybody. Who doesn't draft some <laughs> Yeah, you know what that is? <laughs> better than everybody. <laughs> I'm surprised he actually hasn't cracked the top six in some leagues. I've seen, you know, I've you know, I've seen some leagues where He's gone like maybe six, seven, eight. But I, I mean, like at that point, like after you go, after you go, McCoy, Peterson, Charles, Lacey, Forte. Why wouldn't you go Graham? Uh, I, 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 I just might. I haven't had that position. Listen, we're not helping out anybody by saying okay. Jimmy Graham's really awesome. Yeah. What I will say. By the way, Jimmy Graham is really good. <laughs> yes, he totally is. What I will say is, uh, I'm not touching Rob Gronkowski at all this season. And listen, I know you're a Patriots fan. You're gonna, but like. He's going at like 31 overall. Maybe he's, slide, maybe he's sliding to like 50, but you're, you're hoping to get Rob Gronkowski. He, he had surgery on his torn ACL in January. That's nine months. That's the same amount of time that Robert Griffin III had. Mm -hmm. And was RG3, did he look no. good yesterday? And they always, or last and they, year? No, and they always talk about the fact that you actually need. Now, I know Gronkowski is a freak of nature. And do not in judge that, him by. that it is really hard to get injured as often as he does. But that's the way he plays. It's just, it's really just all about the way he plays. Look at when the Patriots got a full season out of him in 2011. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you're getting a full season, I'm just saying. If the you most draft, yards and the most touchdowns ever by a tight end. If you draft Rob Gronkowski, what's going to happen is you should not expect more than 10 games from him this season. If you draft Rob Gronkowski and you suddenly feel like having Bud Light for breakfast and taking your shirt off at random intervals, then you are living the Gronk life. And I understand that. But if you draft Rob Gronkowski, you better be willing. If you do it in the third round, I still think that's crazy. But if you can get Gronk in the fourth, maybe the fifth, which I've seen happen a couple times, and I've heard about that from friends, um, of which I have a few, uh, yeah. then you should do you should do that. But you have to be ready to then marry him to a backup tight end later on, a Charles Clay, 
a Ladarius Green. A Someone Tim Wright. Else. A Tim Wright, exactly. There you go. Um, okay, fine. Um, I'll, Just my thinking. I won't. I won't beat that bush. Um, I like. <laughs> There's after this. It's just it's just a bunch of garbage that's going to get you seven points a game. I will say, as we at, towards the end of that top ten, though, I love Kyle Rudolph, and 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 it's not often that I say good things about Norv Turner, but Norv Turner makes tight ends succeed. Jay Novacek, uh, Antonio Gates last year with Jordan Cameron. Jordan and Cameron. How many different quarterbacks did they have throwing to Jordan Cameron last year? Oh, at least seven of them. Yes. One of them was Jason Campbell. Uh, no, that didn't. Yeah, happen. no, that happened. I'm serious. Jason Campbell threw the ball to Jordan Cameron several times, and he caught it and scored. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, Jordan Cameron. I think he actually may take a step back this year, given the potentially, and by potentially, I mean definitely shaky quarterback play they're going to have in Cleveland. Uh, Jason Witten, not somebody I would be drafting in the fifth round. I know Romo loves him. They have a Romo bromance. That's fine and dandy, but he's not a fifth. He is another guy that is pushing the other side of his career, which I don't need on my fantasy team. I'm much happier buying low on Pitta. I'm taking a chance with Jordan Reed. I love me some Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz, again, as we talk about uh, these sophomore receivers, tight ends qualified. Dude, do not draft Eric Ebron. Don't draft any rookie no. tight end. I don't want to hear about uh, Austin Serafina Jenkins. No. I don't want to hear about Eric Ebron. Get, get your Zach Ertz in his, in his second season. He is going to become a prime target, even with even with Brent Selleck still on the team, I like Zach Ertz a ton this season. Chip um, Kelly's offense is crazy, and there's enough yeah. footballs to go around from McCoy to Macklin to Cooper and to Ertz. Okay, that's our tight end discussion. Let's close things out with some discussion of defenses. Uh, at the top of the uh, at the top of the rankings, we've mm -hmm. got the Seahawks, of course. Uh, I think that's that's a reasonable that's a, that's a reasonable thing that they're the top defense. The Seahawks. I'm not drafting. I'm not drafting a defense before the 14th round though. Maybe the 12th round I'd go for a defense. Right, if, I can't, if, if there's not a historically great dominant defense, right now, there's no 1985, there's no 1986 Bears to me. Here's, there's no 2000 Ravens. Here's my theory on defenses. First of all, I don't want to draft a defense until, because it's just, it's, it's kind of random. It's random number generation mm -hmm. week to week. Um, what you expect out of a defense, the, the, the best metric, uh, predictive, predictive metric you have is quarterback sacks. Mm -hmm. Quarterback sacks not only get you points, but they also lead to interceptions, fumbles, and, and you know, ideally defensive touchdowns in a good week. Pressure. So, so that's why I like the Texans as the 10th defense, even though that might be kind of a garbage defense uh, overall. Mm -hmm. If you have Jadevian Clowney and the best defensive player in the NFL, J.J. Watt, producing pressure, uh, and that terrible, terrible uh, slate of teams that the Texans are playing this year, which is, you know, besides the AFC South, they also get the last place teams. I, I really like the Texans defense uh, as, as kind of a, you know, just going to go grab them later in the draft. What is that, chamomile tea? What do you want, to take a nap? <laughs> J.J. Watt, good on TV and on defense. Yes. And a dominant, a dominant presence, and yes, I do believe they're going to get in a lot of sacks this year. They'll, you know what they'll probably do? They'll be one of those defenses like last year's Buffalo Bills who I picked up and helped me win the championship, thanks to your excellent advice. War Room Here Live every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Uh, gave up a lot of points, but got a lot of sacks and a lot of picks and like that. Very turnover friendly, very sack heavy, very point prone defense. But on some of those weeks when they're playing a lesser opponent and you can generate those sacks and get a couple of those picks and maybe a pick six, we're talking the difference between grabbing some waiver wire Charlie who gets you seven points. Like the Kansas City Chiefs were awful towards the end of the season, though they began as the number one defense. Yeah. And then the Bills and other teams like that, even Jacksonville was not a bad defense towards no. the end of the season. You, okay, so you mentioned the, uh, the Bills defense, which came out of nowhere to be a fantastic fantasy defense. Uh, fourth overall in the NFL DVOA. Who was the architect of that defense? Mike Pettin, now coach of the Browns, who are my sleeper special. Mm -hmm. I just made that up. Nobody else has used. Nobody else has ever used the term sleeper special. Before. Matt's sleeper special. <laughs> um, I like the Browns a lot this year. Yeah. As a, they're going to be a great defense, uh, and I think that they're going to surprise some people with the amount of points they produce uh, mm -hmm. on the fantasy side of things. And uh, those are my thoughts on defense. Yeah, I think everyone. You know what, everyone. The, the trendy pick right now that everyone's jumping up to grab are the St. Louis Rams because of the fact that they. They are gonna. They're already an excellent defense, mm -hmm. and now they grab that big bad boy out of Notre Dame, and they yeah. got Michael Sam. Oh, I don't know if you heard. It has a rather inspirational story. Mm -hmm. um, 
And Aaron, Aaron Donald from Pitt. Aaron Donald, Aaron Donald from Pitt, excuse me. That's, yeah. that's what I was talking about, excuse me. Um, they grabbed Aaron Donald. And that's probably going to be, it, if not one of the best, probably the stoutest. We're talking 2003 Carolina Panthers kind of stout defensive yeah. line. A lot of sacks, a lot of pressure, very few running yards given up. They'll be an excellent defense. I just don't, I don't feel like, you know, like grabbing a defense in the ninth or tenth round is bo- it's like that's like gluten free pizza. It's like, oh, I guess it's yeah, it's boring. Yeah. I want to, I, I, I'd rather grab one later and still find point values in grabbing one of those cool backup tight ends, or maybe grabbing a sleeper running back. Uh, going after, going after that. Uh, like the bills later, like a Sammy Watkins. You right. know, that, like hey, maybe a high upside guy like that is who I who I'd rather have. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Or my, my my boy Mike Evans, or even Kelvin Benjamin. Grab one of those guys. Sit back a little bit later and grab a defense like Buffalo. Uh, you know, hey, maybe even take a flyer on the rebuilt Chicago Bears, who invested entirely in their defense in the offseason. And I know Seattle let them up, but you know, everyone gets beat up. In sure, Seattle. sure, of course, that's fine. All right. That's it for fantasy defenses. Should we draft kickers, by the way? Um, uh, yeah. Nah, no, it's we're fine. not going to talk about kickers. There's a bunch of them. Uh, one final thought on defenses. Just don't grab Matt Prater. I don't like the Cardinals this year. They lost uh, too much. They lost too much up the middle. Lost too much talent. Didn't replace it with uh, enough talent. Nah, and they already play in the NFC West. Nah. Hold not off. Do the, it. Hold off on the Cardinals. Not going to do it. What about Denver? The way that they reinvested in their defense. Denver's tomorrow. Denver's a little Ware. bit a little bit overrated, but uh, but Tlaib. a but but a solid. That's going to be a solid defense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, you know who I don't want to come within ten country miles of? Oh, the Dallas Cowboys. Yes. No. Not even. Not even close. They are. They are a fallout. Like I would only go near them with like one of those Walter White suits and a breathing mask and gloves. They had a historically terrible defense last year, and it got worse over the off season. I'm gonna tell you what. You know who else is overrated defense, defensively speaking? Um, the New York Jets. Now, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Pats guy, and it's fun to try and kick the Jets just in the season. I know. Look, last year, uh, everyone talks about, like, oh, Sheldon Richardson, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Muhammad Wilkerson, beast. They've got such an incredible line. They're stopping the run. They're not producing quarterback pressure. 19th in points allowed. Middle of the pack in sacks. And also, uh, they uh, recently auditioned me to be cornerback. They have no... Mm. D. Milner, out for a while. High ankle sprain. Uh, Not well. Um, Dimitri Patterson... Uh, AWOL, gone. Kyle Wilson is still Kyle Wilson. They have nobody to play cornerback. They've got that great safety, Calvin Pryor, they drafted from Louisville. But I think the Jets are going to want, they're just going to rest in the middle of the pack for all the braggadocio and blowhard from Rex Ryan. They're going to, they're going to, don't s- spend. They're going to still stop the run, but they're not going to get you fantasy points on defense. Don't spend on reputation. All right, done. And we're done talking about defenses. All right. Woo, we got a couple minutes left. Uh, we're going to take some questions, Nick. Sure. Um, I'm just going to give you... Uh, Do you want me to go to the audience? Or? No, no, no. I got it right all here on the, oh. uh, the, the piece of paper here. Uh, Ditters15 says... <laughs> <laughs> don't. Just don't even take Ditters15 uh, has got a keeper 10-team PPR league. Do I keep AJ Green for a second rounder, Geo for a fifth rounder, or Le'Veon Bell with his, for his last pick? And I think Geo, no. But it's kind of between A.J. Green for the second rounder or Le'Veon Bell for his, this final pick. Oh, I was going to rule out A.J. Green in the second round because that's where you're going to draft him. So why keep somebody where you're going to draft him in the first place? But Geo, who's going uh, early in some leagues in the second round, pretty much should be going in the third round. As a fifth, has value. However, Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell, Bell as your final pick, as your last pick? Mm-hmm. N- oh, dude. Yeah. Wow, that's an absolute no-brainer. All right. Um, that's like if someone says I'm going to DQ, yeah, I want one. I <laughs> uh, got a tweet from at uh, Evan Starr. Is Josh Gordon worth keeping for 2015 season? Uh, where can I keep him? Uh, on your bench. Okay, that's fine. Where can I keep him? Um, sober. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> now, where, uh, wh- where is that person going to keep him? That's the question. Yeah. If you're gonna, if he's a high round keeper, absolutely not. If he's a I think low this is late for round a, keeper, this is for a tenth rounder. Oh, all right. The problem is, in if this were a baseball question, sometimes in baseball, if someone gets hurt early and they're on the DL, they're out for the year. You can stash them on, you can put them on the DL, and you hold on to them for the next year. I don't think I would do that in football. It's too important, especially with shortened benches in popular leagues. Can't do it. You, you can't just stash someone. If you're stashing someone for like a return in week 10, which people kind of did with Percy Harvin last year, thinking Gronk, he was going to be exactly. back in week 10 and Gronk, then yeah, stash. If you want, if you know that they're going to be there for your for your playoff run, that's that can be a savvy move. No, not an entire season. No, there's no IR in fantasy. If there's an actual injured reserve in the NFL, but there's no idiot reserve for holding on to a guy who's got a dead season. Yeah, this question is from uh, Butt Stuff. <laughs> 
Don't laugh, that's his name. Uh, first keeper is LaShawn McCoy. Second keeper, he wants to know, should he go with Larry Fitzgerald, Cordero Patterson, or Percy Harvin? Oh, that's tough. I think this is basically, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase this question. Let's say Cordero or Percy Harvin. Okay. I think this is a very interesting thing. Not Larry Fitzgerald. Talking. No, no. Okay. So you, don't, you don't want Larry Fitzgerald. No, all right. Well, well here's the thing. Uh, Percy Harvin could end up showing you the exact same value that Cordero, Cordero, whatever, let's call the whole thing off, shows you. But everyone is spending on Cordero Patterson somewhere between the fourth and sixth round. Percy Harvin, no one's spending on until between eight and eleven. So I think I think his uh, his ADP is is around uh, is in the the low fifties. I've wa I've watched him I've watched him sink like a stone to the bottom of some drafts just because everyone's afraid of him getting hurt. I would rather hold on to Percy Harvin and take that chance because I'm not quite as high as you are on Cordero Patterson. Uh, I, I like Cordero Patterson. I would actually prefer Percy Harvin as well because I think that we've gotten to the mass hysteria groupthink mm -hmm. of just like assuming that Percy Harvin will be injured because, you know, he got a concussion last year and one of the few times he got regular season game action. Mm -hmm. But what I've seen so far in the preseason is that they throw him, uh, they'll, they'll start off, the Seahawks will start off a game throw him the ball twice, and it opens up the entire offense. And then he has such game-breaking speed. People forget that the year that, that Adrian Peterson ran for 2,000 yards and was the NFL's MVP, wasn't the best player on his team that, that first half of the year. It was Percy Harvin that was having the MVP. Out of control that first half MVP. of the year. So even, even if you're getting 10, 11, maybe 12 games from Percy Harvin, you've got someone that... If you know that he's out, that's fine. You can just keep him off the roster. What what I hate is when I'm stuck with like, hey, who do I start at wide receiver two or in my flex? Is it going to be this guy who gets me seven points or eight points? You know, if it's Percy Harvin, I know that he's injured, know that he's out for this game. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I don't have to worry about it. When I when he's healthy, I play him and he produces. Right. They're basically the same player at this point now. And yeah. it's funny that Minnesota traded one away to just replace him with someone else. I prefer Percy Harvin because I trust the Seattle offense more than I trust the Minnesota offense. And I know Matt Castle has looked good. And if he's stable, <laughs> isn't that hilarious? Isn't that hilarious? I said that. And you know what happened? I didn't make a clown face and I didn't like it make air quotes or just, I didn't say JK either or mm -hmm. lol. Um, if there's a little quarterback stability there, that's fine. But Teddy Bridgewater may get in at some point and he, I, I, I'm just not on the Teddy Bridgewater wagon yet. I much prefer going with the Russell Wilson led Seattle offense. Agreed. Percy Harvin. Uh, we got some someone asks thoughts on Darren Sproles. Uh, I think he's uh, pretty tough for this, his size. I think he's uh, got a, a had a great career. Thoughts on Darren Sproles? Uh, I wouldn't just even grab him for the handcuff factor to Lashawn McCoy. I'd grab him for the fact that the Eagles are probably going to score in the 30s this year. And yes, they're actually even though they're going to need to be a lot of footballs to go around in Chip Kelly's offense. Okay, oh, Macklin's got it. Oh, no, Riley Cooper's got it. What about you guys love Zach Ertz? And Shady's got to get it 25 times a game. Okay, let's say Sproles gets seven carries, four screen passes, and three kickoff returns. That's a flex position. I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. Um, and especially with, uh, like, the, love him in the ninth round. The upside available, especially in, uh, in a PPR league. Um, big fan of Darren Sproles. He's and they've I've seen kind of an Eagles preseason game, the one where they steamrolled the Steelers. Mm -hmm. uh, Sproles looks fantastic. Yep. I know he's uh, he's getting a little bit old for a running back, but he hasn't played enough to really warrant the same sort of wear and tear on his body. Uh, somebody tweeted at, right before the show. I know we kind of covered it when we went over the quarterback stuff, but for those of you just tuning in, um, and it's just because I think it merits debate: uh, Manning or Breeze? Breeze, second round. You say Breeze. Yeah, I still say Manning. I say actually my order is uh, Breeze. Breeze and Rogers are one and one A, and then mm -hmm. Peyton Manning's my third. Wow. Yeah. You know the funny thing is just like with the three top running backs, any all three of them worthy selections. Any one of them could go off and be the leader. All right. But um, I don't see anyone else being the number one quarterback. Got another question here. Um, is Jarrett Boykin going to be a big sleeper? Uh, no. No. I don't even know why I should he, have to answer that. He, he uh, produced well for me on the waiver wire on one, one team, the one team that I had that didn't make the playoffs last year. Because he filled in for Cobb. Yes, precisely. But he's basically, Jarrett Boykin is your wide receiver three in, uh, uh, in Green Bay now. And so he's playing like James Jones role. Right. So, and it's one of those things where like, yeah, he might have a game where he gets 100 yards and two touchdowns, but he's not going to produce that game the rest of the season. And James Jones would do that. And then what did we all do? We said, old star James Jones. Wake up at 4.59 a.m. so we could hop on waivers at 5 and grab James Jones and then watch him go 2 for 11 the next week. Yep, precisely. Nope. 
Um, let's see. We talked about Jay Cutler. Is any? We'll keep it in Green Bay. Is any tight end in Green Bay worth drafting? Hmm. And here's here's where I'll say maybe uh, a strong a strong maybe in that I don't like Andrew Corliss. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Rodgers is a rookie tight end, and therefore I don't really want a piece of him either. No. Nope. However, that Green Bay offense, led by Aaron Rodgers, is so much. It, it, it's it does so well, and that if you were starting tight end is out for is out mm -hmm. for a buy or injury, then yeah, I'll, I'll Andrew Corliss I think is an acceptable bye week play because uh, because he can score a touchdown or two touchdowns any particular game because it's Green Bay. Right. I, I I'd be, I'd say no just because. I'm just writing down even a bunch of guys I can imagine would be available on waivers or very late round kind of guys. We've already talked about the fact that I love Charles Clay, and he was very helpful for a lot of teams last year. Some weeks only five points, some other weeks 11 and 15 points. Um, Garrett Graham is now the number one tight end in Houston. Been very good whenever he had a chance to shine when Owen Daniels would be out, which was often. Like we said, Tim Wright is going to be the move tight end in uh, New England now, and even though Gronk will be back, there are a lot of balls to go around, mm -hmm. and Brady loves that position. Uh, and also, uh, Heath Miller, just go dependable. He's good for 47, 650, and six touchdowns every year. There's True. nothing wrong with that. No, don't, Fine. Don't, 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 don't try too hard. No. Just go with what works. If you don't get a stud tight end, just go, just, you know, go chicken parm, go steak and potatoes, chicken parm. All right. That concludes our hour talking about fantasy like football. Like that? Just like that. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. I, can't, I, I, already, I already am having so much fun this fantasy I know. football season. Oh, um, great start to the season. For those of you who watched live, thanks for joining us on SBNation.com. For those of you who are watching, say, a replay of this, mm -hmm. perhaps on SBNation.com, maybe on YouTube, thank you for watching. And for those of you who are part of the new thing, the new thing, listening to a podcast, mm -hmm. I, uh, I hope that our voices were uh, dulcet tones that carried you to a destination of your I, choosing. I found them rather harmonious myself. That, th this, was, this was a wall of sound Phil Spector would himself have All been right. envious of. Uh, if we did not get to your question, please stay on this video page at SBNation.com where SBNation.com fantasy experts will answer your questions in the comments. As for now, we'll see you next week, 4 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday afternoon on SB Nation. And don't forget, you can always tweet at us, at Matt Ufford, at Ahoy Nick Stevens. We'll be as helpful as possible when we're not taking care of our own teams or... Doing drinking. stuff. Yeah. Doing stuff, exactly. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching this SB Nation video. If you liked it, do us a solid and click that thumbs up button. And for more from SB Nation, subscribe to our channel. And while you're at it, how about watching one of these videos over here? Come on, what else are you doing today? Click it. Go.